Welcome to our introduction to the periodic table. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about where the periodic table came from, as well as some of the major categories of elements represented on the table. Let's start by what we have today. We have a periodic table that looks much like this one. Uh, we have 118 elements that we know of, and they're all displayed on this table. Back when the very first periodic table was created, we didn't know of all 118 elements. In fact, they only knew of 63 uh, when the very first one was put forward. And the guy that did work on that was named Dmitry Mendeleev. He's a chemist that was credited with the very first periodic table. And we're going to take a look at what he came up with uh, as the very first one. So here we have it. This table represents Mendeleev's work and what he came up with. There's a couple features that we're going to point out that connect it to what we have today as well as show why this was such an important starting point. The first thing we should notice about Mendeleev's table is that the elements are organized in terms of increasing mass. So here's hydrogen, then lithium, then beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, all in ascending order of mass. So let's get that down. Elements in order of increasing mass. So that's the first thing. The next thing he did was to make sure that elements with similar properties were grouped vertically. Okay, So lithium, sodium, potassium, these elements are all vertically oriented with each other because they share properties. So elements grouped vertically by similar properties. The last thing he did that was a pretty big deal actually has to do with these empty spaces that he left in the table. These empty spaces are really important because they represent the fact that he knew there must be elements in those positions. He just didn't know what those elements were because they hadn't been discovered yet. But based on the layout of this table, he knew there had to be elements that were as of yet undiscovered in those places. So he left blank spaces predicting future elements. Now one major change from this that our modern periodic table has is that it's not organized by increasing mass. It is in fact organized by increasing atomic number. So hydrogen's one, helium's two, lithium's three, beryllium four. So this increasing atomic number or increasing number of protons is how we have the modern periodic table organized. But why is this called a periodic table? Well, periodic is a very important term here. They call the table periodic because as you move across a row, the properties repeat themselves periodically. So from that idea came up something called periodic law. Periodic law says that properties change as you move across the table, but that they repeat on the next row. This periodic law is the major cornerstone for how this table is laid out and why it's laid out the way it is. Let's take a look at Mendeleev's table again because it's kind of cool to see how it would line up with what we have today. So if we take his table and we map it to what we know it looks like today, you would see something like this. Now let's look at some of the major categories of elements shown on the periodic table. Here we have our periodic table. The first thing we want to add into this uh, that you'll find on most periodic tables is a line that we call the staircase. And the staircase looks like this. It starts over here by boron, and then just like a staircase, it goes down and over, down and over. And it basically splits the periodic table into two sections. Anywhere to the left of this line, we have metals. And if we go to the right of this staircase, we have what we call nonmetals. Let's look at what's different between metals and nonmetals, aside from anything obvious that the names might imply. So we have metals 
and we have nonmetals. And we're going to look at what's different between them. So metals are almost always solid. The only exception is mercury, Hg. This is the only metal that's naturally a liquid. Nonmetals can be solid, liquid, or gas, although they're mainly gases. Metals are also typically malleable or flexible. They also have luster, which means that they're shiny. They're good conductors of heat and electricity. And they're opaque. Light can't travel through them. Many of the non-metal defining properties are kind of related to what you would see on the metal side in that they're pretty much opposites. For example, non-metals are not lustrous. They're actually dull. Okay, they're not shiny. When they're solids, they are not malleable like metals. Instead, they are brittle as solids. They're also very poor conductors, so not conductors. Nonmetals also have a much greater variety in their appearance than metals do. Now these are all general guidelines. If a metal is not one of these things, that does not automatically make it not a metal. If a nonmetal is not all of these things, it is not automatically disqualified from being a nonmetal. So these are just guidelines. And in fact, there are some elements that really don't fall nicely into one of these two categories. And we have a whole separate third category for elements that really don't fall into one of these two very well. And we call them metalloids, or semi-metals. Let's look at the periodic table again, and we'll mark where these are so we can see that their location on the periodic table actually makes pretty good sense given that they're defined as things that are not quite metals and not quite non-metals at the same time. So our metalloids, or semi-metals as some places may refer to them as, are boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, tin, tellurium, and polonium. Now, astinine, AT, is also sometimes considered a metalloid. Uh, important note here, PO and AT, these two down at the bottom, these are sometimes in dispute whether or not they're actually metalloids. So if you see them referred to as a metalloid in one place and not in another, it's okay. It's because they are disputed. But all these other ones are definitely metalloids. That wraps up our introduction to the periodic table. Any questions you have from this lesson, make sure you write them down in your notes and bring them with you to class.